think um, we are all deeply in our hearts right now. The words of wisdom, the words of wisdom that's just filling up this space, filling up our hearts, filling up our minds, allowing us to see the truth. Loving what is, loving what is, as difficult as that is, loving what is, transforming our communities, transforming. You're calling on so much you all are, all the speakers have called on and painted the real picture and calling on us too. to be with what is, and that does not mean just like you said, Rupert sitting and la la la, it's act and it's act now. And you gave us lots of thought of how to act, of ways to act. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Rupert. We're going to really take the time now to be in community, to be in Sangha, and to, um, we have Rupert here for a few more minutes. It's, it's late in the UK and he hasn't had his dinner. And he's, he's got a lot going on called bed. Rupert said he would stay. He's here. He's here for a few minutes. So we'd love to um, have any Q&A with him. That is any questions that you have, any comments. He'll stay for a few minutes and then we will allow him to to, to go into the rest of his evening and we'll continue on. So I see a hand up, uh, Kiran, Kiran, Kiran Patel. Kiran. Kiran, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful space. I, so this is a question for Rupert. And when I was hearing your share, I was sensing perhaps reading into it. And so I want to check out with you um, a bit of an undertone that I was sensing of separation. Um, so I want to ask you, um, can you, you made the comment about the leaders of cops or something. Can you see yourself in them? Where is your heart in relation to them? And your strategy for, for if I understood your your story, your whatever correctly, um, destroying a building. I think of destruction as some form of violence. We just had a tremor right as I spoke, earthquake tremor here in the Bay Area. Um, how do you? choose to exercise a strategy that involves destroying a building and still stand in care for all and mm. that consciousness of oneness outside of like just transcending separation or do you mm. do or do not thank you yeah thank you thank you uh so look let me uh clarify a little um what i actually did <laughs> So uh, what I did is I threw uh, fake blood over the steps of this building. Um, and uh, the blood, the fake blood is, uh, is water soluble. So it would just wash off. Um, so I was arrested for criminal damage, uh, but I didn't even do any permanent damage to the building whatsoever. Um, moreover, um, there is a really important question, it seems to me, about the definition of, uh, of violence. Um, I believe that violence is uh, essentially doing harm to other beings, hurting uh, other beings. Um, I think that if you um, damage a, a piece of property, that is not necessarily uh, violent. So. Um, for example, if, if uh, uh, well, let me just give another example. Um, some friends and colleagues of mine some years ago um, uh, disabled a, um, uh, a jump jet, uh, an airplane that was going to be used by the Indonesian armed forces 
to kill people in East Timor. Now, they disabled it with hammers and so forth. I don't believe that that is a uh, violent action. I think it uh, helps prevent violence um, and is distinguished from violent actions because they did not do anything to harm people or other beings. Now, your, the, other, the first part of your question raises a, a deeper challenge though, which I think is also really important, which is, is there a separation between, uh, am I sort of othering these, uh, these climate change deniers, these leaders, uh, Bolsonaro, Johnson, uh, whoever it might be. Um, and, you know, sometimes we probably do some of that and um, put my hand up to that. Um, but that is not my uh, aim uh, at all. Um, I, I know some of these people. I was at college with Boris Johnson. Um, he's, a, he's a lovely guy. Uh, uh, he was, he's never done anything but nice things to me. He was very... He's very loyal, he's very funny, um, he's very smart. Um, he is, however, um, I can confidently say, someone who is completely inappropriate to have in charge of a country. Uh, the idea that he is capable of, of leading uh, a major nation is, is, you know, it's a joke. Um, uh, so that's kind of just a statement of fact. Uh, as I see it, he has very few of the of the qualities that are really uh, uh, needed to be a genuine leader. Um, and I think it's fair enough to say, uh, as Greta um, has said very clearly, um, that we are not getting, we are not seeing leadership at this time. There are exceptions. Um, Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand, for example, I think is uh, doing quite a reasonable job. And obviously, if we look, say, at the US, I think it's reasonable to say that, uh, that the Biden administration um, uh, is, is taking more care on climate than the Trump administration did. That is, of course, a very low bar uh, to have to jump. Um, is the Biden administration offering true leadership at this time? No, it is not. It is so, so far off the pace, so far where we need uh, so far from where we need to be. Um, but uh, I do think it is very, very important not to get into a, a game, and I didn't get into this game, of, uh, of being um, unpleasant towards, uh, towards uh, leaders who have very difficult jobs, of saying nasty things about politicians, uh, naming, shaming, blaming, you know, none of that serves us. Um, and yeah, I didn't do uh, any of that because I don't. Um, and since I, I'm no longer an Extinction Rebellion spokesperson, but when I was, um, I made a strong point, as we all did, um, of, of not doing that, of not falling into that trap, which is so often the way that, that progressives or people on the left or Greens or others um, speak and act, which is purely from a position of kind of... Uh, of, of, of anger. Um, having said that, I also think there's a place for anger and a place for rage. Uh, I think that, uh, that um, it's dualistic to deny that. Um, I think that if we think that a spiritual perspective is incompatible with feeling and expressing uh, rage or um, uh, feeling and uh, uh, expressing uh, fear, um, I think we're not welcoming everything, yeah? If everything really is welcome, um, then we have to accept that side of ourselves as very real too. And you know what? It all comes from love uh, in my view. Um, and I think not just in my view, um, the fear that we have, we feel that fear because we want to protect what we love. The anger that we have is about uh, injustice that is harming uh, or will harm uh, what we love. So love is at the root of all these things. And I think that a, a true spiritual approach um, embraces uh, our fear uh, and our anger, but it chooses when to exercise that and, and, and doesn't allow those uh, difficult emotions 
to to rule uh, the show. Um, so I hope that I'm not governed by, I was not exhibiting the, the separation that you were uh, concerned about. Um, I believe that the um, holistic approach uh, that I was gesturing at in my remarks um, is fully compatible uh, with, uh, with love as the base of all and fully compatible um, with there being a place for fear, uh, for anger and so forth. Um, uh, and certainly I feel that towards climate change deniers who are um, literally um, um, accessories to the, to the, the killing uh, of, uh, of many of our descendants and indeed people and other beings who are alive uh, right now. Um, but yeah, uh, we need to strive for uh, a poise of uh, a pose and a poise of, of balance um, through all of this. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why I think it's very helpful to have a, a spiritual basis for one's action or one's activism. That was a rather long mm. answer. I hope it's <laughs> a, a rather uh, deep uh, um, and challenging question. Yes, that was a beautiful question. And that was a beautiful answer as well, Rupert. Thank you for that. We needed to hear all of that. Um, I see Jeff. Your hand is up, Jeff, please. First, I just want to express gratitude. Um, Rupert, your writings have been so important to me. Uh, your writings, as well as your videos that you post, um, it's fantastic. And I can't, I, I just keep looking for new ones all the time. So I'm glad you keep putting them up too. Uh, and I, I'm in the middle of your, the book I just discovered, the parenting book too. So, which is everything. So, uh, Thank you. And uh, so, yeah, so Joanna, you, Tanisra, all have been such uh, supports for me, you know, and because of the clarity with which you address the things that I've been addressing also, but uh, not able to articulate or write uh, or public speak. This is actually huge for me to actually even unmute myself and come on and talk with you guys. Um, uh, which is, has stopped me a lot of my life from uh, using the, the uh, I feel like I have this gift of finding the truth when other people are, are presenting it, you know? And I, I worked really closely with Joanna for a lot of years, a long time ago in the eighties and nineties. And, and, and a number of other people as well, but speaking myself, standing in, in uh, the truths that I can recognize and being able to uh, utilize them in public presentation isn't a gift that I feel like I have. And I, and I have tried it and many times, including when I was working with Joanna. And, and uh, a lot of times I just get disconnected from being able to think clearly and uh, I kept trying it many times and I had, I just have this fear of public speaking, I guess. So I, anything that you could say to, to me, and I'm sure I, this, I'm, not, I'm not totally unique with this. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of other people that feel this way. And uh, to, you know, what, what has helped you, Rupert, in, in uh, uh, being able to have the courage to name things as directly as you have in the face of, I, I know you've gotten a, a lot of, uh, blowback for your, I'm sure your whole life. So uh, any, anything that you could offer to us in that regard and to me would be really, really appreciated. Well, Jeff, thank you. That was such a, a lovely, a lovely uh, question. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously I appreciate you mentioning my book, which is uh, Parents for a Future, um, How Loving Our Children Can Prevent Climate Collapse, which is, um, I think it's probably the most important book I've, I've written. And um, uh, I'm really hoping that it will uh, make a bit of a difference uh, in this incredibly hard time that we're in. So coming to your question, well, look, firstly, may I say that I think you expressed yourself very nicely just then. <laughs> that was just fine. Um, and also, I want to note that you did remark that you, uh, that you did have quite a, a strong kind of quality, you thought, of kind of finding um, wisdom, intelligence, whatever it is, and kind of... Um, being able to sort of uh, 
put that together you know maybe there's something there around um uh, sharing that with uh, the stuff you find and then sharing it with other people um, and that could be sharing obviously via um uh, the web um via writing or it doesn't have to be via public speaking and to generalize from that i guess what i would say is um we all need to kind of um, tune into what our potentially unique gift is uh, in relation to this great task, this great work uh, that we are called to. Bearing in mind that we're called to do it together, which has been emphasized a few times already this, e this evening, it's this evening for me. Um, we're called upon to do this work together collectively. There's a very severe limits on what any of us can do as individuals in relation to this and the individual actions for example that you can take in your own personal life that, that's great but there's no way that those will be enough so so to think about where you fit as it were into the greater ecosystem of uh, of of movements of awakenings that are going on and for many of us of course what that's going to be um is doing something working with or helping somebody else so you know, the, for example, the people who have done stuff to help Joanna Macy um, over the years have made a real difference. Um, uh, somebody like um, George Monbiot, who some of you will know, a British uh, writer and journalist, um, not everybody knows that he has a major team working with him. He has a team of researchers who work with him and work for him. Um, he would not be capable of doing what he does by himself. This is true of absolutely everybody, right? So, you know, maybe you can be part of a team, who, maybe you, anyone, can be part of a team that is doing something uh, uh, remarkable. Final remark, um, in, in my own case, uh, and I think it's very much the same for my, uh, for my amazing young colleague uh, and friend, uh, Greta Thunberg, uh, and I know it's uh, the case for uh, some of my colleagues in, um, in Extinction Rebellion and in, uh, in other movements that I've been a part of. In my own case, I experienced a dramatic improvement in my ability to, um, to speak, to resonate, to, to write even, but certainly especially to speak, to resonate and communicate around this stuff a few years ago when I decided to do so with complete honesty. Um, when, when I overcame uh, the, the wish to be liked by everybody, the wish not to make waves, when I decided to take the chance of saying and expressing exactly how I felt uh, and exactly what I believed was going to happen. And that to me, start, for me, started about five years ago, and then it was accelerated by Extinction Rebellion uh, two, three years ago. And the secret, the great secret of the success of Extinction Rebellion and of um, uh, Greta Thunberg and the school climate strikes and I think also of the, the Sunrise Movement, the great secret of our success has been the willingness to speak directly, to resonate directly, to emote, to be willing to express our, our love uh, and, our, and, our, and our terror uh, and our grief, the things I was talking about in my talk a little while ago. And that has an incredible power, and I believe we've only just started to touch that power. Uh, so many things are already gone. Many things are going to be broken uh, in, the, in the years ahead of us. But this power, if we, each of us in our own way and together, allow ourselves to, to be and to be moved by this power of the truth and, uh, and of who we really are and of what we really care about, what we can do is incalculable. We do not know it. We do not know the limits of it. I believe that, that, that myself, colleagues, Greta, we've only just started to express it and to tune into it. And I believe that many of you who are listening to these words will be doing that very soon if you're not already doing it now. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you. Can I just uh, say that was enormously helpful. And one, one of the ways of the many was that it, it helped me appreciate what I'm already doing uh, mm. and what, what I already yeah. have done, but I wasn't really, yeah. I've always been thinking, well, I can't do what you guys are doing, you know? Yeah. And, and this is a whole different, what you just pointed at, 
going to be back towards this mm. is not the only way you don't have to be a superstar you know mm. uh, so that's really helpful uh um but also just want and, and also to say jeff you yeah. know whenever anyone says to me the kind of things that you just said to me that is very helpful to me in keeping going and as you implied you know it's sometimes not easy to do the kind of thing and to say the kind of thing that i say and to take flack for it and so forth yeah. so remember that, that that when you just little things like that they can be they can be really significant thank you and 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 i just wanted to say also just mention your other book uh, this civil uh, this civilization is finished i think is an incredibly wonderful book uh real, one of the most important books i've ever read so and i've passed it around a lot and but i also wanted to say one more thing is, is uh not not a question but just to say there is an event happening in Washington, D.C., Indigenous Peoples Day. There's a five-day civil disobedience happening. If you go to people that might be interested, it's uh, called People Versus um, Fossil Fuels, and it's Indigenous-led, and uh, and it's it's being organized right now. You can jump on it if you want to get come and just be support or come and get arrested. So uh, it, you can you can just just uh, pe people vs uh, fossilfuels.org. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful conversation. And I'm, I'm aware of the time in the UK right now and that Rupert has signaled that he actually has to go now. I know many of you have so many questions and comments. Rupert, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your love, for how much you love this planet and how much you love life on Earth. Um, and we love you. Thanks. Thanks, Conda. Thanks, Tendisira. Thanks, everybody. I'm really pleased to have been here, and I wish you uh, a great rest of the day. It's important work. Beautiful. Good night, everybody. Okay. I'm going to say good night because it's dark here. <laughs> Bye, Rupert. Much meta. All right. Be well. Be well. Beautiful. Whoa. Ah. So Tanisha, I think what we want to do is just continue where we you had beautiful, I hope, breakout groups where uh, you might have shared um, if there's anything that you would like to share, any questions or comments from anything else that has happened this today or please, where the floor is open and I see Jennifer Carson, you still have your hand up. A time, we also have a time. Yeah, we do. Oh, wow. Dynamic, because we've sort of almost come up to our, our mm. I know we're sort of just sort of motoring on through over here. We wow. Had we had so much time earlier and it just went away, didn't it? Uh, uh, <laughs> Do we it, take one question or just move sure, to break? Sure, let's just squeak one in if we can. Okay, Jennifer, your hand is up if you can. Yes, um, and I will try to make it brief in the interest of time. I, I wanted to um, ask a follow-up uh, about kind of something that you said, but it's really for both of you, um, about the sort of delusion of, of separateness mm -hmm. and how central that is to, to change in our practice and in our kind of view um, in order to move forward in any kind of useful way. And I wanted to know, so I have a mostly Theravada practice I've had for a long time, and I would love to hear from both of you what practices you do in what meditation, how you incorporate some um, training and sort of undoing that delusion of separateness and, and strengthening the understanding of interconnectedness in your, in your meditation practice. Oh, thank you for that question. Um, I have to say the power of metta has changed my life, honestly. The power of metta is something that I incorporate how I live on the planet whether I'm walking and um, I'm about to step on a little bean um, and I give metta, I'm, I, I am a person that metta is my default, it's my default. And so what that does is connect me to all life. Um, whether I'm in a car, walking, driving, talking, um, it, is a, it is my, it's definitely my default. And so it has, deeply connected me to all life on earth and to understand my deep interconnection. And so that is my practice. And I, um, it's, it's nonstop. It's sometimes I wish it off, <laughs> you know, but it's a nonstop kind of a um, tape that goes right to my heart and it's just not a head thing, but I, I um, so that's my practice. And I, it's, I can't be 
anything but deeply connected because of my mental practice. Oh, thank you. That's so helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And to me, there's a dance between, and it goes to the question to Rupert, between um, seeing the being and, and Baba's, the oneness, everything resident in this one awareness. So, and it's connected with the metta where you feel you give rise to a version that creates a separation or judgment. So in me, the direct practice is coming from the discriminative dualistic mind, which we actually uh, live in abstractions in <laughs> and coming more directly. And this is the foundations of mindfulness as you practice Theravada into the felt sense embodied experience. And so the somatic knowing is a less discriminative place and it connects with feeling. And I think this is where we also root the metta is not just cognitive, but rooted in feeling. And once you're rooted there, there's empathy and connection. And this also, for me, is also balanced with equanimity, where the inevitability of dualism is also the, the play of shadow and light is part of our learning curriculum in this plane. So there are those that are carrying shadow, we all carry shadow and it's projected. And a lot of what we're experiencing now in this apocalypse, meaning that you know things are being unveiled, is to see our collective systemic shadow, which we started the day with, looking not just at personal practice, but looking at systems and how much of that shadow is now in the conscious mind rather than held in the unconscious for us all to engage with and to purify and to transmute and transform. So as um, you're here this afternoon, let me talk to indigenous elder, Alison Ihara Brown from Ohlone Lands, Oakland, um, that um, one, and I'll finish with this because I know we're taking a break, but one of, and Jeff just mentioned the, the, the act, activism that's happening at uh, Washington right now, the State Capitol building, is one of the actions there a few years ago against the Keystone Pipeline between an alliance of Indian and cowboy alliance that have worked together to stop the pipeline. And one of the cowboys um, that were in that, another five day action there talking about we're all Indians now, or we're all in the margin, you know, those people that have been, lived in the margins of this society and the systems that we are in and have been oppressed by them have known this forever. <laughs> But we're, but we're all now up against the si uh, systems that have a life of their own that are killing the planet and we all contribute to those systems. So those, those are all things that are coming up for us to look at. So the equanimity mixed with the compassion and the meta uh, allow for this deeper vision, the, the deep time of Joanna Macy to see the deep work and to be able to have resilience through the ups and downs of that work. Um, so, yeah, these Brahma Vihara frames are really important for us in meeting this challenge that we're in. So uh, let's just leave it there for now.